Welcome at E2E Designs, it's time for a resto. Ration, yeah! And every of these clan freaks out there go wild when they see that. That's a 28 year old clan attitude in Horizon Linear Fate. But the glory of the bike and the paint jobs long gone. As you can see the paint jobs worn and faded. That was the original color like on the derailleur but it's long time ago. So the owner of this bike wants me to do something which drives nearly every clan freak out there insane. He wants me to remove the original paint job. Yes, you have heard right. I have to remove the original paint job and this frame will never be original again. <laughs> and to do that, I will use media blasting. And the paint's gone forever. <laughs> but if you want it, I can swipe off the dust and send it to you in the back. Just send me an email. I don't need this paint job anymore. I like to apply a new one, in this case Storm. And if you are interested how to do a client Storm paint job, stay tuned. But before I can start, I have to remove some parts on the frame, like the original liners and the cable guide on the bottom bracket. And when I've done that, it's time for the fun part, media blasting. <laughs> There are two things you need to know when it comes to media blasting. The first thing is never give your frame to the wrong guy and the second thing is never do it for cheap. And the reasons are obvious. I use a special soft media blasting technique which can't harm the aluminum of the frame. It removes only the color and then it stops. I can also leave the bottom bracket inside the frame when doing media blasting and I use it also for carbon fiber frames as you have seen in several of my videos. My technique takes longer than normal media blasting and it's more expensive because the media costs a lot but it's worth the time and money spent on this technique because the frame won't get harmed. There's no rough surface, no damage in the aluminum. It's factory like when it comes out of the booth. So let's put it in and let's start. Yeah, let's check the result. And that is what it is now. As you can see, no damage on the bearings. The aluminum surface is also nice and smooth. No damage on the surface. And that's the original factory finish. They did a glass bead blasting in the factory. And that is how it looks. I have to fix some damages, like on the handlebars. Here's a little dent I have to fill. The frame has also a bit chainsaw like most of these frames and that will be the next step. 
And next I have to fill the dents and the chain sock with metal putty. If you want to use it yourself, link in the video description. That's very easy. That's a two component epoxy putty. And yeah. I need only some in the size of a peanut. 1% of the hardener. I have to mix the putty and that's it. And next I have to mix the colors and that is what these bikes are famous for. A very bright color range and that is what client freaks want to see. So safety first and let's put on the shades. Let's start and if you want to know how to mix client colors, I made a complete tutorial with all information you need. Find it here in the corner, so check it out. And what I have to do is I have to mix two colors a violet and a magenta. These are the colors in the middle of the frame. On the front section, it's a standard black. We don't have to mix it, but on the chain stays and seat stays, we have to mix a very bright color. And that's what I like to start with, the neon pink. So let's put on the bucket on my scale. Let's level the scale and let's add the neon powder. And I start every time with the neon. I add some thinner. Stir it well. But I'm not done, I have to add also another color because these neon pinks tend to turn red when you add too much pigment and to avoid that I add also some purple, neon purple, only a little bit, not too much. So you can avoid that this color turns red. A bit more thinner. Let's level the scale again and let's add the same amount of intercoat. And that's it, my color is ready to use. There's one thing left we need to do before we can start applying primer and painting the frame and that is removing the original bolts for the bottle cages. These are simple steel bolts, no stainless and what happens during the years is they corrode inside the rivets and a lot of the cases you can't remove these screws, you twist the rivet and what you have to do is a huge pain in the ass. You have to cut off the head of the bolt, you have to drill the rivet out of the frame and to avoid it I will change all screws to stainless steel screws like these and that's what I have to do and when I've done that I can start applying primer in the paint booth. I will apply two different primers, a black one on the fork and on the mission control 
and a white one on the frame. And what I'm applying is a two component edge primer made for aluminum. So make sure you have the right primer. If you use the wrong one on aluminum, it won't stick and your paint job will peel off. I gave the frame also the mission control a light sanding with wet sandra and 800 grit wet sanding paper to open the surface of the primer for the base coats and to smooth the surface to perfection and what I have to do it next is I have to spray white base coat on all the areas where I like to stick on the stickers and the stencils so let's do that and let's change again to the paint booth. The frame has to cure for 20 minutes and in the meantime I painted the mission control and also the fork and black base coat. And now it's time for the mission control logo and to do that we need a tray of warm water, the mission control of course, some water slide decals, I make them myself and some paper towels, that's all. So let's cut some of the mission control decals. Don't mix the left and the right side, they are slightly different. And it's very easy. Put the water slide into the tray with the warm water. Now we have to wait a minute or two. And then we can slide the decal onto the mission control. As you can see, the decal is floating in the water. Now I have to catch it. And I can slide it onto the mission control. Place it in the right spot and now I have to use a paper towel to squeeze out all the water left underneath the decal. And that's it. And next I have to stick on all the stencils for the climb decals. I made them with my sign maker and what I also did is I masked the positions of the decals on the frame where I like to stick them. And yeah, it's very simple. Put them some transfer paper and yeah, stick them on the frame. <laughs> Thank you. 
The stencils for the decals are on, but we are not done. What I have to do also is I have to mask the top section of the frame where all these storm clouds will appear. So what I did is I cut some of these clouds and I have to stick them on. These are the stencils for the clouds. So let's put them on the frame and then it's time for color and the paint bows. And we are ready for color. I start in the middle of the frame with the magenta. I will add the violet into my spray gun. At last the black, so from the lightest to the darkest color. The neon is the last color. I do neon every time with the last color because if you have some overspray and you have it on the neon, it's hard to fix this. So we will start with the lightest normal color, the magenta, then the violet, then the black, and at last the neon pink, okay? Let's go. I change the color in my spray gun to violet. I flip the frame upside down. I will do the downside first, then I will flip the frame again and I will do the top section of the frame. Let's go. fade on the frame is done and now it's time for some airbrush artwork and what I have to do is I have to stick on some more stickers, some more clouds. I have to spray the shadows with violet and magenta and when I've done that it's time for clear coat and this time we have to do something special. As you have seen I didn't remove the stencils so stay tuned if you want to know what's the special on this frame.
frame looks pretty done, but it's not. There's one thing missing, and that's the lightning strikes. And to do them, I use my brushes, and I will use a special brush, pinstripe brush like this. I need also some white color, and it's simple. All I have to do is I have to brush them on. I will spray some highlights with the airbrush, and then it's paint boost time to apply the clear coat. And the last step in this painting game is like every time the clear coat and I loaded my spray gun with a two component hard solid clear coat but this time it's a bit special. As you can see all the decals are still masked and there's a reason for doing that and the reason is these decals should be debossed. That means there's a gap in between the decal and the frame color itself and to create the gap I use two layers of clear coat so what I will do is I will apply a first clear coat, I wait until it's dry, I remove all the masking and I will apply a finished clear coat, so two layers to create the debossed effect. Let's start. Yeah, that's the first layer of clear coat and it seems matte because I did a light sanding with 1200 grit. What I have to do now is I have to peel off all the masks and then it's time for the second layer of clear coat and the paint job's done. Yeah, here it is, the fresh painted frame and the last paint in this game are the liners. These frames have internal cable guides and we have to install them. And to do it, I use an old piece of brake wire with some cord on one end and a little hook. So let's go fishing and let's mount these liners.
and it's every time the same. Put the wire in and try to catch it. Sometimes it works the first try and sometimes you need a deep breath. So good luck if you want to try it. And it seems that I have luck. Here it is.